Hello and welcome. Today we have an interesting piece of test equipment to look at, but first I had to uh, show off my latest flea market finds. Went to the flea market this weekend and had no intention on buying anything, but the first thing I spotted was this Emerson over here on the uh, right hand side. And I spotted it from like 15 feet away just looking at the knobs. I said, that looks like an Emerson. And uh, I walked over just to stick my nose down and take a look at it. And uh, the guy that was standing there said, uh, you want that? And I said, well, I said, I'm not really in the market for any more radios. And I said, do you know what it is? And he said, well, the top is over off to the side. And he brought this over. Ah, good storm raging outside, and sure enough, it's got the Emerson logo on it. So I spotted that just from looking at the knobs, but there's a restoration project coming. Five bucks. Uh, <clears throat> so I said to the guy, I said, just let me leave it here. I said, I'll be back in a little while after we finish walking around the flea market. And ten minutes later, I bumped into this Crosley. And uh, that was also five dollars. I mean, how, how can you go wrong? The only thing wrong with this, really wrong with it, is it's missing the platter and the two little needle cups that go in here. I can recreate the needle cups with the 3D printer easily enough, but I've got to come up with an 8-inch turntable platter. And I know it's an 8-inch because I pulled the platter off of this one and set it on there and it lines up perfectly with the idler wheel. The only problem is the center, the spindle. This one's a much bigger diameter spindle. I can't find any manufacturer's name on that. I'll bet somebody out there knows who makes that mechanism and probably tell me what to look for. Uh, it's got a separate little slider here as well as this triangular plate. These three holes are identical to the ones that are under the platter on the Emerson, but the rest of this assembly is very different. I don't know my turntables, but this diameter taper down here is larger and the one off of the uh, Emerson doesn't fit. And I'm going to have to recreate a needle. And if you've watched uh, David Tipton's videos recently, he has, uh, he's been making new gold decals or lettering for the radios and he had a machine to cut vinyl to do that. And I bought one, haven't even had time to open it, sitting down there in the box. But we'll get around to that when I need it and figure it out. Okay, what's up for today? Well, today we have this guy. This is a Supreme Triple Three Radio Analyzer. This is evidently a fairly late one. There's many of these, or I, many, there's at least two right now on eBay. These switches were the latest upgrade that they did on them. There was a version before this that had push buttons, and a version before that that didn't have any push buttons or switches, only these. And they'd have to use jumpers. The way this thing works is you pull a tube out of the radio, and you plug this in where the tube came out. Now this has all the adapters for the different tube bases. Uh, I was lucky, this thing's got all of its components with it. And you plug this in where the tube goes, you plug the tube into the appropriate socket here, and then let's say you wanted to measure the plate current, and you knew that number two was the plate current, you would put a jumper from here, to the milliampers and from here to the whatever range you think you should be in and then you open the circuit between these two and then it goes through the DC milliampere so you can measure the plate current. Same with the cathode current, etc. and so on. And you can measure all the appropriate voltages. This also has uh, an AC voltmeter, uh, an regular ohm meter, and can measure capacitance up here and the, that's kind of a uh, dicey uh, system. You plug 115 volts in there then come out here, feed it through the capacitor into the appropriate jack and measure the reading on the meter. 
So you're in the pin jacks. If you're familiar with pin jacks, whoops, wrong one. Safety concerns back when in the 30s and 40s were completely different. I mean, you're playing with 115 volt open metal pin jacks on these things. This I acquired at the Deerfield Ham Fest. I forget if it was last year or the year before. And it's been sitting around ever since. Uh, I have played with this a little bit. I know the meter movement's good. The volt, uh, volts do not work, AC or DC. But the ohm meter does function. And the milliampere range functions. But they all are off. Uh, about a decade. In other words, they're off by a factor of 10. Somebody's played with this. Somebody's been in it, and I think they got the registration wrong on the resistors that I'll show you in a moment. There's also a bridge rectifier in here for the AC uh, mounted on the back of the meter movement that's been played with. There's three new modern wires soldered to it and the fourth wire that's supposed to go to the bridge rectifier wasn't there at all. And when I found that I just set this thing aside because when you see the underneath you know it's going to be a Herculean task to try to figure this out without a schematic. I have the original owner operating manual. No schematic in there though however. Uh, I took that, I scanned it, and I blew it up so that my old eyes can read it. And the original manual is pretty tender anyway. The more you handle it, the more it's going to fall apart. But then I got online, and I, I want to pass this information on to you. There's a fellow that, for a long time, I've been buying on eBay from him, Steve Johnson. And I've been buying dial lamps and miscellaneous bits and parts. Well... I did a search for model 333 schematic and it took me right to his website. I was blown away. He has schematics for most of this Supreme equipment. And there we have it. He had the schematic. So I'll be able to get in there and figure this out. Now there's several versions of this, but this happens to be the one that matches mine. Uh, I got real lucky. and. This one has, you know, this one just shows the pin jacks, but uh, it's the same thing. Mine has the switches. The one without any buttons or any uh, push buttons would have probably at the time had jumpers in every position. And then you just remove the jumpers one at a time to get, you take your measurements. But they simplified it down to where the connections are on all the time until you turn off one of these toggle switches and it breaks the connection for you rather than having to have jumpers all the way down in every position. Made it a lot easier to operate. Uh, there's a little panel down here. Takes three C cells for the ohm meter. They are presently in there. Uh, what else? Oh, I was lucky. This, this cloth covered cable is in great condition. Here's one downside to this thing. They decided in their supreme wisdom that they were going to work with some group, what do they call it, a standards organization, and they were going to change how things were designated. Now, normally when you look at the bottom of a tube socket, especially these older tubes, this is pin one, two, three, four, five. If you've got the two big ones, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's the conventional system that we use today. Well, they tipped that upside down on its head. They decided that the grid was always pin one. Uh, what did I do with the five pin? Oh, this one. They decided to call this pin one. And this became two, three, and four and five. On this one, the grid would have been one, two, three, four, five, instead of one, two, three, four, five. It's completely different numbering scheme. And that's reflected here. This is labeled pin one. This is pin two, three, and four. These are three and four. These are the heater connections. 
these stay connected all the time but if you had something that used the uh, the heater as the cathode you can connect to it but it really it, it it's giving me a headache trying to st trying to figure out the right pin combination. <clears throat> when these things are plugged in, you have to remember that pin one is the grid. So position one is the grid, anode, uh, one, two, three, and four are heater, five is cathode, and then you have six and seven, which can be additional grids on tubes with extra with three grids on try on. Uh, those types of tubes and then you have your TC or top cap connection here you really gotta watch it you really really gotta watch it that, that you're not disconnecting or you know where you're connecting on the tube you have to remember their convention number one is grid number two is anode three and four are filament and it's the same they say no matter how many pins three and four are always the heater so if you've got something with this number of pins, so this is four, three, two, one, and they claim that's the grid on all of the tubes, unless it isn't, and then you have to start figuring out where to go from there because there are tubes where the convention is not, this is always the grid. So you have to have a, a, a tube manual laying there when you're working on this and figure out how it fits into their standardized configuration but it should be some fun to play with I'll probably restore this play with it a little bit and then sell it because it's not something I'll use uh, whoops hanging into the uh, tripod here okay let me show you what I'm up against and uh, we'll pull some of the screws out now I told you the C cells are down here in the body of the unit for the ohm meter and uh, it's kind of a clever configuration that they did this is a some type of phenolic or it's not bakelite it's like a phenolic uh, I'm not sure exactly what it is if it was bakelite it would have broken long ago I think because somebody's over tightened the screws and there's big dished areas over here but there's no cracks fortunately all the uh, that top panel is intact okay we've got the four screws out there is a version of this that has an AC line cord going into it so that you don't have to plug in 110 volts or 115 volts here it's present whenever you plug the line cord in, but then you got to remember these jacks are hot. Uh, safety standards were a little different back then. Okay, you remember the C cells. Let me move this manual. In fact, let me get the cover off of here and get this out of our way. The C cells are inside of this. It's just a block of wood that's been bored down the center to the diameter of the C cells and then you have your conventional spring like you'd have in an old flashlight and it connects to this. The positive side is picked up by this plate, has a through the screw that goes through into a captive nut and up to this one. Then on the back of this unit you have a solder lug here and a solder lug there. That's how they pick up the DC current for the ohm meter. But there it is. And this is what I'm up against, or was up against, trying to figure out without a schematic. You see there's a candome resistor here. And I don't know if he's got taken this apart and got the registration wrong. I don't know. Um, I know the DC voltmeter doesn't work, but I don't think that's been messed with. But this is the current setting, and the ohm, ohms setting, somebody's played with the wires in the ohm setting, and we have another canned ohm resistor here. Yep, more thunder. So I don't know what's going on with that. There's a million 
old leaky capacitors in here literally leaking oil that have to be changed out oh here's that rectifier let me zoom in on that a little bit see if it'll stay in focus if i do that yeah i think it will oh is it going out of focus a little bit it's hard to tell in the viewfinder here's that little instrument rectifier and it's only got one two three wires on it and no free wires dangling anywhere. It's like, where do you start? Where do you even begin to trace out how that's supposed to be wired into this? But fortunately, like I say, Steve Johnson had the schematic and online for download. So now I've got a prayer. There's a push button switch here that somebody has bent the terminal on. It's on all the time it's only supposed to be on when the push buttons press but it's so deformed that it's not even holding the button up anymore you can see the buttons in that button's supposed to be up in that position and you push it for capacity testing the capacitance uh, what else can i show you before i dig into this of course all of these capacitors have to be changed this thing operates using all the AC ranges use these capacitors and uh, they say down here that let me zoom back out so we can get all of this in frame there we go condensers remember they were condensers back then C1, 2 and 6 <clears throat> are calibrated to individual instruments now C1 uh, oh I found it the other night where is it Oh, here it is. C1 goes to the bridge rectifier for AC measurements. Uh, and then 2 and 6 are a critical part of that circuit to make sure you have the right uh, impedance or electrical resistance for AC measurements to feed into here and into the uh, bridge rectifier. Now, because this is probably something like an iron copper rectifier, I don't think it's selenium. I think it's an iron copper stack, which was common back then. Uh, I'm going to put a solid state rectifier in here, of course, because this one is dead. But I'm going to have to make some adjustments. I think those iron copper rectifiers had a voltage drop of 3 or 4 volts, and your silicon diode is only going to be around 7 tenths of a volt. So I'll have to play with this capacitance. Uh, a little bit to get the reactants to match you know so it drops the voltage a little bit more so that I get something of an accurate reading here with the uh, ohmmeter but fortunately the meter movements good he didn't blow up the meter movement so that was a plus it's quite the unit uh, and again they made several versions of this thing quite a few versions of it but I'm going to have to get in here, and I'm just going to be going. I won't bore you with the whole process. I'll be checking resistor by resistor by resistor and changing out all of these capacitors, and we'll see if we can get this thing up and going. And I'm using this as kind of a fill-in job as I'm waiting for the finish to dry on various other projects I'm working on. So this, this video, I don't know when I'll drop this video. It, it, it's going to get interrupted many, many times here as I uh, restore other stuff. But rather than sit around waiting for finishes to dry and so forth, I figure I can work on this in the interim. Okay, let me get on with it. Okay, we've got the air conditioner going, and I'm sorry, but you're just going to have to live with it. Um, first issue I found, remember I said there was a lead that wasn't connected to this bridge rectifier. That's fed through this 0.7 microfarad, which is hand-picked for the unit. We come in from the 5 volt terminal. Come in, it's paralleled with the push-button switch for the microfarad. This was fine. However, this end of the capacitor, instead of going to the bridge rectifier, he had connected to the other end of this resistor and capacitor combination. So this capacitor just was shunted across these two terminals and that left the bridge rectifier open. 
So I've just temporarily moved this wire. Now I don't know if this is the correct wiring configuration for this bridge or not. Uh, these four terminal uh, stack rectifiers, I believe AC is like one and three, and the DC is like two and four, or in this case it'd be one and three, and two and four, I believe is the way they're supposed to be wired, I think. It's been many years since I've played with one of these. But at any rate, I've temporarily tacked this capacitor. It just has to be replaced. It's very leaky. But uh, I've temporarily tacked it there as a placeholder. That was the first thing I found wrong. The next thing, I'm looking around. This says 300 ohms, and it says RM. And that means resistance of the meter, 300 ohms. But on the outside, there was this additional wire wand resistor and it is labeled 126.7 ohms 1% or no, 1 half percent half a percent at 126.7 ohms I figured out the impedance they're actually, or not the impedance the actual DC resistance of this meter is about 179.7 ohms and this Additional, I uh, dropped the label now, the additional 126.7 external resistor in the meter resistance totals up to 300 ohms. However, this was labeled, uh, oh, dropping my, uh, dropping everything on the floor here. This only measures 70 ohms, and it's supposed to be 126.7 and it's a wire wand resistor that's why I've got the label peeled off and here it is like 126.7 but it only measures 70 ohms I don't see any signs of charring but for some reason maybe the varnish insulations failed internally so I'm gonna have to unwind that and rewind it and see if I can get something approaching uh, 127.6 ohms I'll have to bring my precision ohm meter over here. So that's where we stand at this point. Man, this thing's a mess. Just so many things. I'm very suspect about this wire right here. Although it does, it does kind of make sense when I look at the schematic, but I've got to trace out all of all of that wiring. It, it's a horror show. And you'll have a terminal with four wires taking off in different directions. And it doesn't, you know, it doesn't match up, look anything like the schematic. You've kind of got to backtrace everything. And one by one, I'm taking the wires and drawing a pencil line on them. This sky wiring that they did back then is such a horror show to try to trace out. But we're going to get it. I am determined I'm going to beat this thing one way or another. Anyway, that's where we're at. Okay, here's where we're at at this point. All three of these canned ohms are junk. Uh, which means I'd have to buy small quantities of special order resistors. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen resistors I'd have to special order to fix this. These are junk. This one here is measuring it's supposed to be 33 ohms it's measuring 4.2 K and if I touch it it goes completely open this section here is erratic and if I just touch it that goes open and these are out of tolerance this one here uh, it's supposed to have a 0 0.3 it's 0.37 not bad 0.45 is 0.7 0.75 is a 1.25, 1.5 is 4.5, we got a 12 ohm section that's only 13.7, yeah, that's okay, then we have a 60 ohm that's 76 ohms, but we have a couple here that are, you know, three times, four times the value they should be. Nothing's open in this section, but uh, it's just a matter of time and they're, you know, they're so far out of tolerance. This guy has got to be rewound, 
it reads 70 ohms presently or last check I was 70 ohms and it's supposed to be 126 uh, I've been playing with it a little bit I've actually got a 120 ohm resistor I could drop in there temporarily. Yeah, it's reading 77 ohms, so something's definitely wrong there. And it's not that they substituted it, it's marked 126.7 ohms. If they put a 70 ohm resistor, it would be marked 70. All of the dog bone resistors are surprisingly good. There's a couple that are right on the edge of tolerance, but the dog bone wire wounds, or I imagine they're wire wounds, they appear to be. These are actually pretty good. The capacitors would be no big deal. In fact, I've got a 0.68 microfarad that would drop in for this 0.7. It would be absolutely fine. Still haven't <coughs> figured out what he did with the wiring here, but that's not a big deal. I've got a rectifier, bridge rectifier that would drop in there. But the main thing is this really isn't worth the expense of buying all those special order resistors, so I don't know what I'm going to do. I hate to throw it away or, you know, just get rid of it. Wouldn't throw it away. I'd pass it on to someone, I suppose. But it's a mess. It's a mess. I don't know what he was chasing here or why he was into the rectifier unless that section was bad or he may have destroyed that playing around in here. I have no idea. This wire is looks like it's been added, but maybe the original wire did the same thing. Uh, I'm gonna have to track that down in the schematic. I haven't gone that far. I did fix the push button. Not that that's gonna gain me anything. Oh, so I've gotta sit down and take a big think about this. I'll put back together the stuff that I took off so I don't forget where everything goes. And consider my options. Okay, I'm going to stop this here for now. Okay, I've made some decisions here. This thing is such a mess that I am not going to go spending a lot of money on buying custom resistors until I can figure out see if I can even figure out how to get this thing working. What I've done in the meantime is taken a bunch of resistors and either series them or parallel them. These two are in series believe it or not. I've got it set up there's heat shrink on them and I just so I can replace the can dome and since this is just floating in space, it's just floating on the leads and it's connected to here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put the resistor there and just tie the leads in it and let the leads support it. I've got, you know, the capacitors and just about everything I need to redo this there. But I'm still trying to figure out what the hell he did and why. This capacitor doesn't even belong in here. This is the 5 volt terminal coming in. That 5 volt terminal coming in. Where's the 20,000 ohm resistor? There, okay, there's the 20,000 ohm resistor. The 5 volt terminal is supposed to go to the 20,000 ohm resistor. This 4700 ohm resistor is supposed to be tied okay this 5 volt should come in and go through this 4700 ohm resistor C2 is a 0 0.08 This is a 0.1, which would pass as a 0.08 and a push. It says in the, in the document here that these are hand-picked for the meter. So that value may be one that was just hand-picked. 0.8, or 0.08 and 0.1 are very close. This, I don't think, was original. We're supposed to come in...
the sink. What the hell did he do here? This is the 4700 ohm resistor. Where the 5 volt should come in, go to the 4700 ohm on the plus lead. And this is the plus lead to the switch. That was there. But he also had the rectifier. He had the rectifier tied into this as well. That's what this wire was. He had that tied over on the 4700 ohm resistor. So effectively, he's short circuiting here. This capacitor wasn't connected to the bridge at all. This capacitor was connected to the 4700 ohm. One end of it here and one end of it here. He put that capacitor across here and this was open on the bridge rectifier. I'm trying to figure out where this 0.2 microfarad came from. I, I had to, That's paralleled with the 4700 ohm. That 0.2 is here and there's nowhere on the schematic that calls for that capacitor there's also two 50k resistors this one's across the leads this is just before the switch the range switch or the function switch comes off of the bridge rectifier and goes into the function switch that's what's designated here but it's showing a 50,000 ohm resistor there and it's showing the same thing over here on this is the uh, two lugs on the switch for the DC selection, DC voltage. And there's a 50,000 ohm resistor there. And it's after this 4700 ohm resistor. Well, there's no 50K resistors on this thing at all. There's two, looks like there's two resistors completely missing. And when you're working with something like this, they make so many changes over time you begin to second guess yourself. I can't even see where they would go a place for them in this thing. But he's done so much over here on this switch. I don't know if there were 50,000 ohms. This jumper does not belong here. I finally figured that out. This, this jumper going from this terminal to this terminal on the switch doesn't belong here. That's something that this guy added for some reason. I'm just finding one thing after another that's miswired. It's just a horror show. And it takes forever to trace this stuff out because it's just all the same color and all the wirings on top of one another. <coughs> okay, anyway, this is kind of what I'm up against. So the 4700 ohm should be on the 5 volt terminal. Here's the 5 volt terminal going to the 4700 ohm. This capacitor, as far as I can see, does not belong in here at all. So I'm just going to lift it out of there for now and get rid of it. One less thing to have to work around. And it's definitely new solder joints or newer than the rest of the thing. So, no idea why that's in there. This 20,000 ohm resistor, which is C2, is supposed to be in parallel with, there's the 20,000 ohms, and C2 is supposed to be 0 0.08 microfarad in parallel with it. However, in parallel with it is this 0.1. Point oh eight Yeah, there's two capacitors in parallel with it. A point one and a point oh eight. So I'm gonna take this out of here. This point one doesn't belong in there. So this is the point oh eight that the schematic calls for. If I have to add yeah, that's just wrapped around the bottom. That was not an original part. So this doesn't belong in here at all. It's 
sell. Come on, get out of there. There's two pieces that don't even belong in the thing. No idea what this guy was thinking. Maybe, maybe he wanted to try to get a higher meter reading here and added more capacitance. I don't know. But it does call for a .08. That's C2. C2 in parallel with the 20,000 ohm resistor. The next one in line is the 100,000 ohm resistor, which is here which is C3, which is supposed to be a point, a zero, point zero one five. And we've got a point zero two. And what's, there's three capacitors. There's, there's a point oh one disc ceramic. There's this guy, point oh one five, which is what the schematic says. And then there's this point oh two. All parallel. All three of these capacitors are parallel with that resistor. So I'm going to take this and this out of here for now and just leave this guy in here. It'll get replaced, but I'm just trying to figure out what belongs in here and what doesn't. Yeah, this, we've got a pair of disk capacitors here that are parallel, that are in parallel with the waxy that's back here. There's this disc ceramic in parallel with this capacitor. Good grief. And there's a mica capacitor underneath here which has been paralleled with a disc capacitor. So I'm going to rip all of this stuff out of here that doesn't belong there and just make it less confusing to work on for the time being. This is what I've been doing for the last two days, is trying to figure out what the hell this guy did. And you can see there's all fresh looking solder joints here. So I'm going to rip out all the stuff that doesn't belong there, and then one by one I'll replace the stuff that does belong there with new capacitors. This, for now, uh, rather than trying to rewind that right now, I. I've made a 126.7 ohm resistor by paralleling up a couple of resistors. I'll just unsolder this lead because I know something's wrong with this wire wand resistor. It's reading 70 ohms. I'll just take one lead off. I'll put my resistor across these two terminals. Still don't know what to do about these 50,000 ohm resistors. I can tack a couple of 50,000 ohm resistors in there, but are they really supposed to be there or is this a different revision of the of the model triple three and again there's many variants many variants of this triple three the other schematic i have is very different this one has a transformer in it it's still a model triple three this is uh, 1934 this is 1933 so this evidently is a newer one, but this appears to have the push buttons. I think that's what's going on here. They're drawn kind of like diodes, but so is, ah, there was another one. Some, some of these connections, you know, they, they're drawn in an old way because here's my bridge rectifier these almost look like diodes so I don't know what that's all about but this this one has a transformer in it and it's a model triple three so do these 50,000 ohm resistors actually belong in there I don't know but I'm going to straighten out everything else I can find along with it first and run some tests on it and see if it uh, if the scaling's way off then I can always stick a 50,000 ohm resistor across there shunting the uh, DC and the AC wiring where it goes into the uh, switch this is just to put a little bit of a load I think on the uh, voltage dividers it's a crazy piece of equipment but I'm going to clean this mess up. I'm going to start here and just keep ripping stuff out that doesn't belong. Okay. 
that's all stuff that doesn't even belong in the unit. This is all stuff that whoever was playing with this added in. And I suspect it may have been they were trying to compensate either for a bad bridge rectifier, because it does have a bad section in it, or maybe this capacitor is so far gone that feeds the bridge rectifier, they just kept paralleling, he kept paralleling more capacitance here to try to increase the voltage readings on the AC scale, is what I think happened. Why he had a capacitor across this resistor, I don't know. This is for the DC section. There's not supposed to be any capacitor there. That was this guy. Why that was in there, I have no clue. So we've eliminated that. And once I've made my way through this, and I'm sure the wiring is 100% correct, then I'll start replacing these capacitors and the resistors. I'll start working on the actual you know, repair itself. But right now, I'm just trying to figure out what he's miswired and, and what doesn't match the schematic. It does bother me, these two resistors not being anywhere on this unit at all. Everything else, all the other stuff's there, including additional capacitors. But those two 50K resistors do not exist. And I find it hard to believe anybody would just remove resistors. But who knows? Okay, moving on. And just for the heck of it. I tend to, after I pull these out, even though I'm replacing them, I like to see just how bad they are, or even if they register as a capacitor anymore. These two have a good opening, wide eye opening, and are pretty much the correct value, but they're both leaking at about 100 volts, they leak. This old Solar, however, 0.02, 400 volts, has no leakage whatsoever and reads dead on capacitance wise. That's pretty amazing. Of course, I'm not gonna use it, we'll toss it, it's going in the trash, but it was just interesting to find out that old Solar from back in the 40s is still a viable capacitor. It's one of the molded, plastic molded ones where the, wax <coughs> the waxies are gone, so anyway. And yet another mystery. This wire right here, which is going to a solder lug, which is connected or bolted to the back of this can dome, shouldn't exist. It's coming off of this connection. We've got the five volts coming in. We've got the capacitance microfarad switch capacity on this button you push when you're testing capacitance. Uh, this capacitor with this leg of this capacitor and this 4700 ohm resistor are all tied together. Well that wire is tied in here somewhere. It's tied into this connection actually. Uh, no, tied into this connection. That's the capacitor and the switch. It runs off and goes up here to this canned ohm resistor. It has no purpose. And the problem being, when you connect 115 volts here to do the capacitance testing, what goes through this fuse, comes back around, and when you push the push button, makes this screw live, which is right here at 115 volts. So anybody that's got their hand on the switch and pushes that button is going to in for a big surprise. No idea why that wire was put in there doesn't belong there, it doesn't go there. It has serves no purpose. Absolutely serves no purpose. I don't get it. And just to make it a little bit clearer what I was talking about, this wire here, which is connected roughly at this tie point where C1 ties in to the push button. This is the 110 volts that you inject for testing capacitance. Goes through that fuse, comes in here, goes through the fuse over here. 
uh, where am I? Comes out, yeah, comes in through the fuse, and when you depress that push button, goes through all of these connections here. Well, that wire was tied to here, right here on the push button, and to the back side of that candle. Beyond me, why he did that. Okay, uh, <clears throat> we've taken and removed the candle that was sitting up here floating on wires that were connected to these. And we've removed this. And here's my replacement resistors for this now. After this is done, if I need to make some adjustments, it'd be easy enough to remove a single resistor and change the value. Same thing here, there was a candle attached here only, and the rest of it was actually it was this way around, floating on the uh, att uh, connection wires, all solid wiring. So we've got the resistors tied here, and again the wiring supporting the rest of it, but it's this is actually lighter than this, so should be fine. It's uh, as it was built originally, more or less. And we've got, you know, three resistors in parallel here, two here. Uh, no, those are two series here and two series here. Two make up equivalent values of R1, R2, and R3, which are 1198 and 960 ohms, respectively. Now we've got to move on and do this one, and this one's going to be a little trickier because it's over the top of these switches. Um, these are the values that it's supposed to be, but uh, this thing's not even close. Uh, this 33 ohm, for example, right now measures 4.2K. The 618 actually is on the money. It's off by 1 ohm. It measures 619 but this is several thousand ohms. The 297 is 305, so that's 100 ohms high. Well, not, no, let's see to be... No, I guess that's not that bad. Uh, the 2.7K is 3.1K, and the 3.269, 3200 ohms is 6.6K. So all of this has to go, it has to be replaced. That'll be the next thing on the list. Okay, we're down to where I'm getting ready to put the bridge rectifier in and change the capacitors. I've got all the resistor uh, resistors changed out where these canned ohms came from. And this canned ohm was mounted in here. I made it, cut out a little piece on my laser, and put some terminals on it, mounted it in there, and I bridged this 127 ohm resistor that was bad. Now this is supposed to be 618, 33, 297, 2700, and 3269 ohms. And uh, I guess we should be able to read that meter up there. This little BK Precision is amazingly accurate. I've got a five and a half digit fluke and this thing's within a couple hundredths of a volt, or a couple hundredths of an ohm rather of that. It's amazingly accurate. But there is one caveat. This is an LCR meter, and it's testing right now at one kilohertz. So if you have a pure resistance, you're fine. But if you have a circuit with capacitance in it, this thing will give you errant readings. So it's only good to check them when you're, uh, you know, you've got nothing but pure resistance. But when you're doing that, it's extremely accurate. I was very, very pleased after I bought this thing. This is supposed to be 618 ohms at 617, which is pretty darn good. Then the next one's supposed to be 33 ohms. And we're 14, 15 meg ohms. So that section's bad. It was open. Next section, 297 ohms, 310. The next section, 2700 ohms and it's 3,300 ohms. And the last part's 3,260, and it's reading 5K. So it's no wonder this thing was reading so wrong when I started working with it. 
and what I've done is just series and paralleled up. This is three in series. This is two in series, two in series. I've got three in parallel over here in this corner. Two in parallel, two in parallel. Uh, and then two in series, two in series, and two in parallel to come up with the correct values. And I'm within an ohm or two on uh, all of them. Some of them are spot on, but I figure an ohm or two is a lot better than being out a couple of thousand ohms as these canned ohms were, or open as this one was. I had one other one that was open. Uh, I forget, oh, it was the one that was here, the three position one, wherever that disappeared. There it is. The R3 section of it, if you wiggled the terminal around, you'd get a reading and it'd be good. And then if you just bumped it again, it would go to the mega ohm region. All of these dog bone style are pretty good. I'm gonna leave them in there. They're good enough for what this meter is. I mean, that scale is, you know, you're never gonna get any accuracy off of a meter face like that. This is just relative indications, but they should be close enough. I'm going to go back in here now and change out all of these capacitors. Actually, uh, this wire I've got to tie back in here. Uh, this wire I have to reconnect down on this end. And why is it all of a sudden too short? Shouldn't be too short. That's supposed to reach all the way down here. Oh no, this one reaches all the way down here. I'm sorry, I've got so many wires disconnected at this point. Okay, this guy ties into this resistor string. This guy ties into the 110. I've reconnected my meter. And now I've got to tie this wire in, change all my capacitors out, put my bridge rectifier in. It's been a long journey. But uh, we're closing in on the end here, and I've got my fingers crossed this thing is going to work. I still don't know about those 50,000 ohm resistors, but I've installed them. Worst case, I can just reach in there with a pair of snips and take them out if they're not supposed to be there. But according to the schematic, they are supposed to be there. Where the originals went, who knows. Okay, I'm going to get on with it. Okay, we've turned off the air conditioner for a bit. Leave it off for as long as I can stand it. We're at a point where I'm ready to smoke test this. Um... All these capacitors have been changed. The bridge rectifier has been installed dead bug fashion. I just put a drop of super glue and stuck the little chip down to the surface and then AC is coming in through this capacitor and this yellow wire here. And then here's our positive and negative going off to the switch. if we can get all of this in frame here. Okay, here's our bridge rectifier. This goes off to the switch. That's our AC circuit. Here's our DC circuit. This is our DC milliamp years, and this is our ohm meter section over here. Now all there is for a switch on this is a two-pole four selection. In other words, there's four tabs on each pole. There's two poles. Did I say four pole? I meant to say two pole. Two pole means there's two wafers with four connections. So it's a two pole, four position switch. That connects our meter in here. And you can see our meter just has two connections. And when you're doing milliampere's, the switch moves over to here, uses this network of resistors for milliampere's. When you switch to DC volts, it just takes these two connections, ties them to this point. Then we use this group of resistors. We can ignore the capacitors because they do nothing in DC. So we have our common, and then we have our network of resistors here for the DC volts. When we switch to AC volts, we're using the capacitors and the resistors get switched over, or they don't get switched over, they're permanently connected here. They go through this capacitor to carry AC only. This won't measure any DC. If you connect it to DC in the AC position, you'll get no reading. 
And if you connect it to AC in the DP, DC position, you get no reading because the meter won't respond to AC. So when we want DC volts, we pick up here. When we want AC volts, the switch moves over. It moves this meter over to this position after the bridge rectifier. And then we're doing ohms, we go to another resistive network over here. It just switches the meter to this position. So I know all of these resistors are good now. All of these resistors are good. I've got new capacitors in here. <clears throat> I've installed all new resistors on all of the networks. All new capacitors, that's all been taken care of. And I have actually, just to give ourselves a fighting chance, when I did all of these resistors, I'm going to turn the camera down here a little bit. I tried to get these all within 1% by using series parallel combinations. Tried to get all of these resistors as close as I could get them. Now these resistors here on this AC-DC part of the circuit weren't too bad. They were at 10-15% in some cases, so I've hidden a little quarter watt carbon resistor down here just to net them in as close to 1% as I could get them. These last two resistors were actually very close. And people are going to call me out for using the carbon resistors, but even if these drift up slowly in value, it's still going to be better than the original resistor ever was. So I'm within 1%, 1%, 1%. Uh, this is within about 2.5%, 5%, and 5%. This is for your two highest ranges. And for this meter, uh, you can't get that kind of resolution out of this meter movement anyway, so close enough. I am still very much questioning these 250k ohm resistors that are in here. I don't really you know it doesn't appear they were there but I've put them in and they'll be easy to snip out and remove if I have to and there's one more thing I'm questioning and that's over here they're showing a 0.2 microfarad going from the top cap to pin 5 on the 7 pin tubes there's a 0.2 uh, two microfarad capacitor I have no idea what that's for um, it's tying basically uh, the top cap plug, it's tying it over here to what is pin 5. And that would be probably the screen grid or suppressor grid, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what they're trying to do here. That capacitor, as far as I can tell, has never been in here because I've inspected the solder connections here and the solder connections here this unit's 91 years old and those solder connections show every sign of having been there for 91 years. They're extremely dull gray, that 91 year old solder joint look. There's no evidence it's ever been touched. Uh, when you've been doing this for a long time you can tell pretty much when a solder joint's been there forever. All of these have been touched. All of these have been touched. You can tell they're shiny. Uh, most of the stuff that was on these candom resistors had been messed with. All those connections were shiny or shinier, but these all have that dull gray oxide layer on the uh, lead tin solder that looks like they've been there forever. I don't think that capacitor was ever on here. Now, the position for these two, which actually the only place that makes any sense to put them is across the switch terminals on the switch, not on the side with the meter, but on the side where these connections come into the switch. They were shiny. They've been touched, but again, he had miswired so much stuff in this circuit there's no way of telling if he took these resistors out, if they were ever there. Because all of these connections have been messed with. Uh, he had been in there and it was all miswired and I had to straighten out all of this circuitry. 
and correct it. He had it. It was the stuff didn't even make sense that he had done. So what we're going to do at this point is I am going to, I think we'll start with the ohm meters, and we'll check the ohm meter circuitry and see if that is anywhere close and the DC milliamp here circuitry and if these two are okay then I'll be pretty sure that the value resistor that I put in here is all right <clears throat> uh, if these two are off by the same amount I'll adjust the resistor that I plugged in here now remember this was like 126 and this is like 127 ohms the two values add up to the 300 ohm uh, resistance meter RM so it would be very easy to tweak this value and that's this guy right here whoops I'm looking at the camera trying to do this that's this wire wand resistor that was at sitting at 70 ohms. It was just out the window. I've got 127.5, I think it is. I don't know. I forget the value exactly. Where's my other schematic here? If I've still got the original. 127, 126.7 is what I put this at. And I'm within a couple tenths of an ohm here. The meter's 179.7. So we're pretty close to the 300 ohm value that belongs in here. You know, combination of this and the meter and the meter resistance, which is here. <clears throat> so again, if these two are off by about the same amount, same percentage, we can adjust this and get that netted in. Then I'll check DC voltage. And if my DC voltage is off, I'll check the AC voltage. If they're off the same amount, I'll probably clip this resistor out if they're low. If they're high, then I'll adjust this value for the DC. What's interesting is when this, when you're measuring AC, both the AC and the DC circuit, these, this part of the circuit remains in the circuit all the time, whether you're measuring AC or DC. So this load of 54,700 ohms is always across the circuit. If you're measuring AC, again, the AC with the path for the AC will go in here and through the bridge rectifier, but that path never gets broken to this series of 50,000 and 4,700, so that's in circuit all the time. There's an additional 50,000 ohm shown here that won't be seen by the DC side because of the bridge rectifier but that's an additional load across the AC very very strange configuration and I'm really having trouble getting my head around why these are here but we're gonna try it yeah, and if they're off by the same amount I'll probably clip clip this one first it'll bring up the reading if they're low by the same amount it'll bring the DC volts up it'll take some of the load off of the AC volts and if AC volts is if I net this in and get it correct and this is still low then I've got a couple of choices I can play with the value of C1 or I can try clipping that guy out of circuit again I don't know what this originally had in it and I haven't done any testing yet so I'm gonna figure up <clears throat> some values uh, so I can test the 5 milliamp 25 120 you know I'm gonna test the milliamp ears make sure that works correctly we'll check the ohm meter make sure that works correctly and if those two are okay then I'll be comfortable that I have the right value here so let me clean up some of this mess and we'll get some of this junk off the table so that we can do some testing here. I'll bring a transformer over so that we can do the AC testing at safe voltages. And uh, I'll probably use that little tiny homemade 
that I made when I was like 14. The regulation's not great on that little DC supply, but it should work to test this meter out. And I know this, this uh, video has gone long, real long. And I hope somebody out there is still watching. But we'll see where we get here, okay? Okay, I know this video is going horrifically long. But there's got to be people out there along with me who are wondering why what should be a fairly reliable wire wand resistor is so notoriously bad. So I've drummled one and we're going to dig into this thing and see why these things fail so horribly all the time. Well, I thought that would come apart. The pinch is off. Why won't that come out? Good grief. Did they put some kind of adhesive in here as well? I would have thought this would have lifted right out of here. Okay, I guess I'm going to have to rip the paper off. Uh, what have I got here? There we go. Zoom out a little bit perhaps. Perhaps we're a little too close. Why are these things so bad? One would have thought that these would have been fairly reliable. Well, it looks like rust has gotten to it. I have no idea how they make the connection. You can see the different pitch, I suppose you can see. Uh, I guess that's not going to focus. Let me try minimum focus and coming in on it. Let's see if this will be as good of at focusing as my other one was. You can see there's a different pitch on this one, different pitch on that one, and this end here, everything's backwards to me in the viewfinder. Uh, so I imagine, what were my, oh, the values aren't written on this one. But from the fine pitch here, it's obvious that's the highest resistance, and this should be the lowest resistance. but I would have thought they would have spot welded the wire to these connections. Maybe they're relying on a press fit. You know, maybe they're relying just on the pressure of the uh, crimp on here. I don't know. Let's dig a little deeper here. Ah, there we go. Oh! Almost dropped it on the floor. Yeah, that appears to be what it is. There is no welding. Now, when I first got out of the service for a few months, I worked as a in a factory. Worked. Uh, I had to supervise a bunch of people on the factory floor making wire-wound power resistors, and we actually spot welded the nichrome wire to the end caps. But these have no such connection. These are re merely relying on the crimp to make the connection with the windings on this. I don't know if we can get that to focus. Yeah, I go back to minimum zoom. There we go. There's no spot welding on this whatsoever. They're merely relying on this crimp to make connection with the last few turns of the resistance winding. From the way that, yeah, this one will just come off as well. Oh, I broke the substrate. But that's all there is. There's no no solid connection to the... Uh... Oh, this is made in sections. I didn't break it. They just stacked the sections together end to end and crimped them together. Christ, no wonder these things were so unreliable. How did they expect that to stay together? I thought I'd broken it, but this is made in sections. These pieces are made in sections. 
and they're just butted end to end and they're relying on this crimp to hold them together. That explains why these things are so notoriously unreliable. Uh, I'm very surprised every time I find a radio with one of these in it that still works because they just all fail and now you see why. Uh, expedient manufacturing probably worked good for the warranty period and a few years after that but uh, there you have it that's why these things are so terrible come on where's the okay I'm gonna shoot this in sections and try to keep it short I know this video is horribly long looks like I've got to change this wire don't you think insulation is a little rough on it let's start with the ohms I've got a power supply, power supply connected to these two terminals at 4.5 volts to emulate the battery. And this should be, it says 1M, it's 1K. So that would be 1K full scale. And uh, if I put this on ohms and short them together, we should get zero. We should be able to zero that. There we go. Wow. Okay, there's zero ohms. Now, if I connect to my decade box here, I've got a Heathkit decade box. This range should be from zero to 1,000 ohms. So let's see if it's anywhere close. Okay, we're on the low range. That's 220. Yeah, it looks like about 250 on that scale, but let's go down to something lower. There's 100 ohms. It's reading a little bit high. Again, I don't know what this, how good this decade box is. There's 33. That's 22 on the on the decade box. Let's see how close the decade box is. Yeah, we'll bring in my fluke here. This isn't the best ohmmeter in the world, but it should give us some indication. What do we set on right now? 22 ohms. Let's see what this says it is. Hmm. Oh, the wrong volts, dummy. We want ohms. Come on. That says it's actually 25 ohms. So, it's not off that far, I guess. Yeah, it's reading 25, 6, 7 and a half, 27 and a half ohms. So, not horrible. Uh, let's leave that on there. Why am I taking it off? Let's try 33 ohms. That says 45 ohms. Let's see what it measures on the fluke. Forty-two ohms. So this thing's the worst. Uh, this isn't. This is actually close-ish. So it's reading a little bit low. Low high, reading a little bit high. Excuse me. Yeah, actually, not that much. That's not reading that far off. Uh, let's go up here to the 10,000 ohm range and let's, uh, let's see. That's mag, mag, mag. No, I don't want that. So let's try 1500 ohms on that range. Let's see what it reads. Hundred and fifty ohm. Okay, that's a hundred. I've got a hundred ohms. We're on the full scale would be. Oh, I didn't move. What a dummy. 
that's 100 ohms this is claiming it's 105 two four six eight ten no one two three four five so that's reading 103 ohms on that scale and let's see what we got here why is my fluke not responding this reads 104.7 that's reading 105 that's pretty darn close uh, let's see here that's 470 ohms and it's reading 500 and something let's see what it really is take the meter on here 530 and this is telling me what yeah, something in the same neighborhood. That's not bad. <laughs> That's actually surprisingly close. Uh, on the 100,000 ohm scale. And we're still on the 4. Uh, I'm trying to interpret this meter. There's a 1,000. 1,000 ohms, and it's reading yeah, 1,010 maybe. It's hard to tell on that scale. Let's see what we really got. Excuse me. Why is that reading? Oh, I think that resistor's bad. Okay, there's 1K. I was off. I was off. Uh, I guess the switch was bad. There's 1K. All right, this needs some tweaking. That's reading 1.5K. 1.5K. And this is actually 1K. So that scale, that, oh. It might be this. There's virtually no connection here. Let's retry that. These pin jacks are notorious for being horrible. No, nope, it's not the pin jack. Okay, that scale could take some tweaking. The 1K and the 10K scale are pretty darn good. The 100K scale needs some work. But I'm not absolutely, I, I don't hate it. I think we're close enough for the initial testing here. Uh, okay, I'm going to take the voltage off of the ohm meter and we're going to inject the DC volts. We'll go to the DC volts next and that would be this one and we'll see where we stand with that. I'll be back. Okay. I don't know if you're picking up the thunder or not in the microphone, but we got another storm moving through. This last week we've had quite a few thunderstorms. This is reading almost 5 volts on the money, and the meter up on that power supply says just under 5. Now I'm connected on the back to make it easy. Let's see what it really is. There's the fluke. Let's try to get the fluke in frame. Here we go. Yep. Resistors on the floor, man down. Uh, minus common, plus five. Point nine volts. What's up with that? My oh, I'm on the wrong. I'm on the wrong one, dummy. What a dumbass. Okay, that's the right, the right one. Now I'm on the five volt one. I got four point seven nine. And that's 4 point five, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. Another volt, so two, four, six and a half, almost seven. Four point seven. That actually is almost point eight. It's four point eight. That's <laughs> wow. Uh, let's see if I can tweak the power supply. This thing is so bloody sensitive. Oh. 
4.96. I don't think I'm going to be able to dial it into exactly. You're just breathing on the pot of this thing. Changes it. Oh, that's 6 volts. That's way too much. 5.5. Oh, 5.03. 4.02. 01. Dead nuts on. Holy cow, how did I get that lucky? That thing is dead nuts. <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's go to the next range. Is where this is where I was when I turned the camera on. Uh, and it's measuring again, right on the five volts in the meter. The fluke agrees. It says five volts, and that is splitting the five right down the middle. Uh, looks like I did something right for a change. Let's get up here to, uh, can I clip on this one? Where's the hole? Yeah, maybe I can get in here. Yeah, I'll clip it to the meter lead, how's that? I think that'll work. Okay, now we're on the, that's 25, five, no, that's com that's common. Common, five, 25, that's the 125 volt scale. Now this power supply won't really go up that high. Uh, I can get it up to 20 volts, give or take. There's 18, 19, 2, 4, 6. Yeah, it's just about right. Let's see if I can get 25 on the money. No, 22, 23 volts is all I can get, and it's just below the 25 volt mark. So I'm happy with that. I could turn on my high voltage supply, I suppose. But it looks like, you know, the main meter, uh, the resistors for the meter itself and the, the main part of the bridge is fine, or the dividing resistor dividing network is fine. So I'm sure that, you know, the resistors are all the same, all within uh, better than 5%. So. In fact, the three lower ranges are all right. That tells me the other three ranges will be okay. Now, before I jump into testing the AC, I want to check the uh, milliampere range, and then we'll go back. I'll drag a transformer over here, and we'll test the AC. I can test at uh, 6, 12, and 24 volts AC safely. Uh, and if they're fine, I'm sure the 125, 250, because they're all using the same divider network. If the AC is way off, I'll be adjusting that uh, 0.7 microfarad capacitor most likely. Depends on how much it's off. But uh, let me get some resistors over here of the right values for some current. All right, damn battery died again right at the end of the last clip. I don't know where it chopped me off, but I think 90% of it's there, and we'll find out in editing. But if it ends funny in the last clip, you know the explanation is the battery died. I'm connected to the power supply now. Uh, I picked up one of the dummy batteries for this thing. I don't like using it because I can't pick the camera up and walk around. I'm tethered. But the battery life on this uh, SX70 is the pits. It's absolutely horrible. All right, we've got uh, roughly five volts on the meter, on this power supply rather. I've got a 1K plus or minus carbon resistor here. Let's see what kind of current. Should be about five milliampers. Okay, there's 4.8. Let's see if we can dial it into exactly five milliampers. That's pretty close. Okay, so we'll connect. This is the negative lead. And let's just touch this in the 5 milliampere one. Oh, well, gotta put this on DC milliamps. And four and a half, but I'm seeing the meter uh, up above drop. Uh, the voltmeter, my regulation's not real good. Uh, let's see. What are we gonna do here? That supply is not stiff enough. Uh, 
voltage wise we've got come on wake up oh the dummy probably just blew the fuse in my meter what a dumbass bet I just blew the fuse Dumbass. Boy, that was a stupid move. Twice in a row I did it. Yeah. Trying to do too many things. I can't talk and think at the same time. 4.74. Ah, the 10 amp. Let's see. Let's bring this up to 5 volts. Above 5 volts. 5.5 and let's see what we got for milliampers. Okay, we're over 5 milliampers. So if I bring that down to exactly 5 milliamps, I should be at uh, 5 volts. Let's see what my reading is here sneak these leads around so we're on volts we're in the right setting yeah we're in the right plug dumbass what a stupid move that was 4.80 and the needle drops down when I do that so yeah my power supply has dropped again I should get a more stable supply over here there's five milliamp ears Four point nine five volts. Okay, I'd say that's pretty damn close. Let's go up to the twenty-five milliamp here. Right on five. We're on a full scale of twenty-five. We're on five. One hundred and twenty-five. I'm going to have to boot the, the voltage up here. Let's uh, let's try. I'm not going to blow the 10 amp fuse, not with that power supply. Okay, we've got, I want this on my meter here. There's 5 milliamp ears. Let's bring this up. Let's see if we can get 100 milliamps. I don't think I can. Yeah, there's 25 milliamp ears. But, I should be able to register 25 on this scale. So let's see what we got. Exactly 25 milliampers. 250, we should be half of that. We are. 500, a quarter of it, we are. And 1.25 amps, that's, that's way too far up. But, we're uh, pretty much on the money, all three, all the scales. Okay, that means I am absolutely happy with my resistor choices for everything involving DC milliamp years, ohms, and DC volts. That means these three are netted. Uh, I'm comfortable. I'm well within a the accuracy that that was when it was manufactured. Probably much better than it was when it was manufactured. So, all we've got left to do is set up and test AC. Let me drag a transformer over here and see how AC volts. I'm not going to bother with the capacitance one. It just uses the AC voltmeter. Once the AC voltmeter is netted in, this just shunts uh, the resistors through a capacitor and it measures the AC voltage through this series of resistors and this capacitor. Nobody's ever going to use this thing for capacitance. The resistors are all new. Once the AC section of this is working, that will fall in place. So I'm not going to hook 115 volts to this and try measuring capacitance. Just 
not in the mood. But, uh, what am I saying? Oh, I gotta go get a transformer. Yeah, if you didn't understand what I just said, once the AC section of this is working correctly, it's just sending voltage when you, when you hook up a capacitor of a given value and it's in decades. It's uh, 0.125, 1.25, and 12.5 microfarads. At AC, your capacitor acts like a resistor. So it's just putting your AC capacitor resistor in series with this capacitor for the lowest reading, then it has another series resistor for the next range and so on and so forth. So if this section is working correctly and this has new resistors in it, it's going to work. It's just the way it is. But I want to see how good or how bad the bridge rectifier is behaving in this and uh, we'll take it from there. Okay, we have our transformer set up here. I'm gonna plug it in. And we've got zero, six, 12. And then if I bring this to here, we have 18 and 24. Now this is zero to five volts. Uh, let's find out what it really is. The fluke here. And the fluke says, oh, 7.6, 7.6 volts. So without a load on it, it's a little bit high. But I should be able to touch this. It's on the five volt scale now. It should go up, go off scale. But let's go to the 25 volt. And let's see, 25, there's 10, there's five. So there's two. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so it's one volt for the major divisions. And we've got five, six, seven volts. Seven volts. And what did we say it was? That's amazing. I am blown away. I didn't expect the AC. It's 7.6. Half a volt off. I did not expect the AC to be anywhere near that close. I thought I was for sure I'd be tweaking some values. But uh, actually it's five, six, seven and a smidge. It's not quite seven and a half, but ugh, I'm not even gonna mess with that. Let's see. Uh, 12 volts. Let's see what the 12 volt measures for real. Measures 15.1, okay, there and there, and 15.5, 15 and a half, four tenths of a volt off. <laughs> By the way, the manual that comes with this, they have a disclaimer in there about AC accuracy isn't great. But they also say, you don't really need AC accuracy because nobody measures AC in a radio, so it's just there for reference. So they, they at the factory were telling us, or telling you when you bought this, saying that the AC voltmeter is not great. But that's not bad. That is not bad at all. Let me uh, jump right over here so we can go up to the next scale. Uh, let's see, so 12 to here, this should be 18. We're still on the 25 volt scale. And what is it really? I should leave this voltmeter just connected. I don't know why I keep disconnecting it. So three times six. Wow. 12 to zero, that should be 18 volts. That shouldn't be 24 volts. 22.6, so what's this? 30. Okay, so that's measuring 22.6. And this says it's 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 24 volts. Now this is a thousand ohms per volt meter, so it is going to load the thing a little bit. Let's, uh, let's check it loaded with the fluke. One, two, now, 22.7, let's call it 23. And this is measuring 24. It's within a volt. I'm perfectly happy with that. I'm not gonna mess with that and try to make that any better. That'd be just silly. 
let's try the 30 volt scale and we'll move this up here our 30 volt scale 125 volt scale and we're feeding it 30 listen to me I caution be sure brain is engaged before putting mouth into gear let's uh, try this one should be around 30 volts 25 we're on 125 25 26 yeah so that scales off that scale could use some tweaking you know what I don't think I'm gonna bother uh, it's working good enough for demonstration purposes that's all I'll ever do with this. After I get the cabinet finished, we'll actually plug a vacuum tube into this and measure plate current with it. No schematic I've ever seen. Well, I'll take that back. If you're working with linear amplifiers, they often give you anode current or plate current. And I think some high-end audio amps, the schematic lists anode current. But your All-American 5s and the stuff that you typically work on they give you plate voltage, cathode voltage, grid voltages, but they never reference current. So this thing will never get used. This, this is just to get it going and save a piece of test equipment from the past. As far as I'm concerned, this thing's close enough. It's, and it's working, everything's functioning now, and it absolutely wasn't before. None of the voltage ranges worked before. And the ohmmeter and the ammeter were so far off that they were useless that they couldn't even give you a good relative reading. But it appears everything is functioning as it should. I'm calling that done. I'm going to uh, put this thing in its box. I'll make up a new. See, I don't have any of this cloth covered wire. This one's beautiful. Uh, but I'll come up with a piece of uh, meter wire, nice silicon wire, and fix this one. And purple. I wonder if that's original. I'm going to wrap this one up. I'm going to say that's a win. Uh, winner, winner, chicken dinner, as far as I'm concerned. Trying to tweak those last couple of ranges in on the AC is kind of senseless. Could I do it? Yeah. Am I gonna? No. It, uh, it's a demo device. If the next guy that owns this wants to try tweaking it, he's welcome to it. But uh, we'll preserve it and put it, you know, we'll haul it out once in a while for a demo. But other than that, I'm done. I put enough work into that. Well, I haven't really. I'll be doing the cabinet. But we will, we'll do the cabinet and we'll do a demonstration in a separate video. This one's dragged on so long at this point. If you're still hanging around, thank you for making it to the end. I'm the radio mechanic and boy, this one tested me. We'll see you soon. Take care, stay healthy. Bye-bye.